Hello, and welcome to Plan Interest Podcast, Future Rich. I am your host, Barbara Ginty, and I'm also a CFP, which is a Certified Financial Planner. Today, we are going to discuss the seemingly very easy topic of IRAs. An IRA stands for an Individual Retirement Account, and there are two types uh, that are commonly talked about, and so we're going to start there, and then I will complicate things. So the first one is the traditional IRA. With a traditional IRA, you are going to get your tax break today, meaning you'll get a dollar for dollar reduction in your taxable income. The money uh, in the account will then grow tax deferred. And in retirement, I will say after 59 and a half, so we'd be on a penalty, you will be able to remove the money and the money will be taxable. All of it will be taxable, right? Because remember, your contribution didn't pay tax going in. It has grown, hopefully. And so those earnings or gains in the account have also not paid tax. So the distributions will be fully taxable and they will be taxable at your ordinary income rates, whatever those might be um, in retirement. Now, that's your traditional IRA. I will say the most popular one, uh, if you were to scroll through social media, would be your Roth IRA. Now, The Roth IRA, your money goes in after tax, so you get no tax break today. Your tax break is going to be in the future. The money grows tax deferred, just like the traditional IRA. And then in retirement, which once again, we're going to say after 59 and a half, and we're additionally going to say with the Roth IRA, there is an additional rule that it's been in there for five years. So five years and you are older than 59 and a half, your money will come out of that account uh, totally tax free. So the money you originally paid taxes on the contribution, the growth of the account when you meet those requirements and you take it out after 59 and a half and five years, there are no taxes on those distributions, which is why it really has become a fan favorite. I like it, but I don't think that it's always the best choice. Once again, when you're dealing with personal finance, this is a personal decision. And just because Somebody might decide the Roth IRA is right for them does not mean the Roth IRA is right for you. There's a lot of variables that go in to determine what is the best solution for you and your specific scenario is, once again, why you always want to consult a financial or tax professional before making these decisions. So that seems easy. Traditional IRA, Roth IRA. Now, everybody knows for the most part with the Roth IRA, you have income restrictions on that. Not everybody is eligible for a Roth IRA. So for a Roth IRA, if your tax status is single, uh, your phase out for adjusted gross income is going to be between for 2024, 146,000 to 161,000. Beyond 161,000, you are not eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. Keyword here is contribute. Uh, If you are married filing joint, then the phase out for you is going to be higher. It is going to be between 230,000 to 240,000 adjusted gross income. Anything beyond 240,000, you are not eligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. This is where people get hung up. And this is exactly why we're doing this mini episode. The traditional IRA, no one ever talks about income. Income is important over here on your traditional IRA, and you're going to see a very similar phase out number that we just talked about, which is the 230,000 to 240,000 for married filing joint to be with a traditional IRA, just because you are putting money in it does not mean that you are getting the tax break, the deduction today, basically two qualifiers in order to deduct a traditional IRA contribution. So we'll start with the easy one. Single. If you are a single filer and you are covered by a workplace plan, so this is the qualifier, are you covered by a workplace plan? If yes, what is your income? And if you meet the income threshold, then yes, you can deduct it. So for a workplace plan, let's start with what that means. That will be a defined benefit plan, defined contribution plan, and any IRA IRA based plan. So for instance, If you're self-employed and you have a SEP IRA, that counts as a workplace plan. So as a single filer and having a workplace plan, so defined contribution, defined benefit, or IRA-based plan, your phase out to be eligible, adjusted gross income, is going to be between 77 and 87,000. Beyond 87,000 as a single filer covered by workplace plan, you are not eligible to take a deduction on the traditional IRA. Not allowed. 
Now it gets more complicated when we are looking at married filing joint because we have two people in a married filing joint situation. So if you are the individual who is attempting to make a deductible contribution to a traditional IRA, your phase out and you are covered by workplace plan. So you're the one wanting to do the traditional IRA, you are covered by a workplace plan. The income is going to be lower. It's going to be 123,000 to 143,000 for your phase out. Anything beyond 143,000 for tax year of 2024, you are not eligible to make a deductible uh, contribution to a traditional IRA. Now, if your spouse is covered by a workplace plan and you are not, now remember, you also don't need income as the spouse to contribute, but this is going to be looking at whether or not one of you is covered by a workplace plan. So in this scenario, we're going to say your spouse is covered by a workplace plan and your adjusted gross income is between 230 and 240,000. Remember, this is the Roth limitation too. Uh, you are not eligible above 240,000 to make a deductible contribution to a traditional IRA. Interestingly enough, it's the income phase out is the same when we were looking at the Roth. So what happens is people make the contribution, have no idea that they need to be looking at eligibility for the deduction on the traditional IRA. And this is where, in my opinion, things get really messy. So you put the money in, you assume it's deductible because everyone talks about if you put money in traditional IRA, you get a tax break today. Nope, only if you meet the requirements. So let's say you don't meet the requirements. You and your spouse are both covered by a workplace plan and you make well beyond the AGI limitations, not deductible. So what does that mean? That money goes in after tax. The earnings on that grows tax deferred. So now when we get to retirement, guess what happens? We have two types of money in there. We have your original contribution amount, which has already paid tax. And then we have your earnings that have never paid tax. So we have two types of money in one vehicle. I don't love that. There is a time and place for this, but the key here is understanding that when you're making a traditional IRA contribution, it is not automatically deductible. And knowing that if it is not automatically deductible, that you understand you are going to have two types of money in one vehicle. And so that is why uh, knowing whether or not you're covered by a workplace plan and knowing what your AGI limitations are. And once again, I would say consulting a tax or financial professional so that you know whether or not a non-deductible IRA contribution is the best for you. So that's really the third type of IRA. There's your traditional, where you're getting your tax deduction, your Roth, where you're getting your tax break in retirement. And then this, I guess we'll call it a hybrid, where you are putting money in, not receiving a tax deduction, so a non-deductible IRA. Not talked about a lot, is something that I'm seeing more and more people run into. It is something that just came up on the podcast, which is why I wanted to talk to you about it and break it down. So if you're not already following, follow along and subscribe to the podcast. And if you like it, we would love if you would share it with a friend. Time for our disclaimer. The opinions voiced in this podcast are for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance references are historical and do not guarantee future results. Make sure that you consult with your own legal, tax, and or financial advisor before making any decisions.